Hi everyone, we're going to review the laws of exponents here and we're going to use that to kind of simplify these into a single base and power wherever possible. So what we got here for the first problem is 5 cubed times 5 squared. So we have to know what that means. So 5 cubed, what that means is 5 times itself 3 times. And then 5 squared, very similarly, would be 5 times itself twice. And then those two are being multiplied, so these are being multiplied. And then we really just come down, it really comes down to just counting. How many fives do you see being multiplied? Well, there are five of them, so the shortcut is five to the fifth, because there are five of these, so that five is the exponent, five to the fifth. Now, the shortcut here is to just keep the base of that five, and then add the exponents. So three plus two, makes the exponent of five. That is the shortcut. You'll see me kind of go both ways here. Either, either way, that might work better for you. I'm gonna show kind of both because again, there's options. For the next one, very similar. We got x cubed times x, so that's x times itself three times, times another x. So we just again count how many x's do you see? I see four of them. So that's the exponent, x to the fourth. Well, how does it work with the shortcut? If there's no exponent on the x, it's a one. So keep the base, add the exponents, three plus one is four. Either way you do it, you get x to the fourth. For the next one here, a little more complicated, we've got some numbers and some powers of x. What I do here is I, I usually think of this or rewrite it using the commutative property first. So I'm gonna take the two and the three and put those two together and the x squared and the x to the fourth on the end. So what I've done is kind of rearrange these. I put the two and the three first and then I rearrange the x squared and the x to the fourth second. You can always do this with multiplication or addition because any order is, is the same, gonna make the same answer because of your commutative property. Now we just multiply the way we know how. Two times three is six. And this is x squared, so x times x, times x to the fourth. And which again, can simplify this by counting how many x's. Well, there are six of these. So it's x to the six with a six in front, so six x to the six. Again, the shortcut would be just to call this six x to the six right away if you look at those powers and just add them. Since we are multiplying with the same base, we keep that base of x and add your two plus four to make the six. Either way you do it, you get the same answer. Number four is a little more complicated here. So again, same idea, I'm gonna do the two times three first, then the x parts, then the y parts. Again, just reordering. So two times three, I moved the x and the x squared next, and then the y thing with the y thing after that. Okay, so then from there, we just do each part separately. So two times three is six. x to the first, that would be times x squared. Well, that would be x times x times x. And then for your y's, it'd be y times y times y times y times y, which would be six x cubed y to the fifth. Again, just counting our pieces, we can see how many x's, how many y's. Now, for our next one, we've got negative exponents. We've got to be very careful when it comes to negative exponents, because it can be a little bit tricky to keep track of what to do with these. So, when it comes to a negative, what happens is, anything with a negative exponent flips the other part of the fraction. And you'll see what I did here. I made this into a fraction by putting it over one. That way, there's a top and a bottom. So this three to the negative two actually goes to the bottom and becomes a positive two exponent because that's what the definition of the negative does. It puts it in the other part of our fraction. Now, but we have nothing left up top and that's kind of a problem. We can't leave nothing up here because nothing is zero and zero divided by anything equals zero. So that's a problem, we can't do that. So what can we put up top? Well, the short answer is that you can put a one up top because one times anything is still that thing. So we're gonna put a one up top if there's any, any missing thing up top in order to keep it equal and complete the fraction. So for the next one, very similarly here, this would be one over x to the positive three. In order to make that negative exponent go away, we put it in the bottom and put a one up top to kind of fill the top of the fraction. Now for dividing, here's how that works. Again, we can, one in doubt, write it out. So x to the fourth is x times itself four times. On the bottom, it's x squared, so x times x. And then from here to simplify, we just get rid of one with one. From the top and the bottom, top and the bottom. And we see what's left. Well, I see that there's two x's left up top, and there's nothing actually left in the bottom. 
If there's nothing down there, again, you can't put a zero down there because we can't divide by zero, but we can put a one because times one doesn't change anything. So let's put it over one, and then we know anything divided by one is really just itself, so x squared. Now, our shortcut for division is to keep our base, and if it was adding for multiplying, it's gonna be subtracting the exponents for dividing. So we do four minus two, and that makes our answer x squared using the rule. Either way you do it, you get the same thing. So for the next one, let's see what happens here. It's the same problem, just flipped as the previous. So it'd be x times x over x times itself four times. Again, we can cancel out one with one, top and bottom, and we see what's left. Well, there's two x's left on the bottom, so x squared on the bottom, and there's nothing left up top. Don't call it zero though, call it one. So it's one over x squared. Using the shortcut, if you wanted to use the division rule, we keep the base of x, subtract the exponents. That gives you x to the negative two, but we don't leave it as a negative exponent. We again, put it in the bottom and make it positive. So obviously you've got the same thing either way you do it. Whatever way it makes more sense to you, stick with it. For this one here, it's a little bit strange. We've got a negative four down there. So that would be y to the seven minus negative four which is actually y to the 11th. You might be wondering, why did it actually get bigger? Well, the negative four in the bottom actually flips to the top. So that becomes y to the positive four times y to the seventh over one, which is why it's y to the 11th over one, which is y to the 11th. But again, using the division rule of just subtracting the exponents gets you the same answer either way. For this one, very similar. We're just gonna keep the base. I'm gonna use a shortcut and just subtract the exponents. So that would be eight to the negative 10. We wouldn't leave it as a negative exponent though. You put it in the bottom of the fraction as a positive, one over eight to the 10th. Okay, then a little more complicated here for division. The nice thing about this problem, it's all lined up. So like we did with, with um, uh, multiplication, we can kind of look at this in pieces. So we can do 10 over five times x squared over x times y to the fifth over y cubed. If we do each part separately, it'll be a little bit easier to keep track. So 10 over five, we just divide like normal. That's just two. X squared over X would be X to the first. And then Y to the fifth over Y to the third is Y to the second. Again, just subtracting the exponents there when they're in exponential form. You can get rid of that one power if you'd like. It's the same thing either way. So same thing over here. We're gonna focus on the numbers together. Then we're gonna do the X's together and the Y's together. So this becomes 24 over six, and x to the fifth over x cubed, and times y to the sixth over y to the first. Doing each part separately, this is four x squared y to the fifth. That's how we do division when it's got lots of pieces there. Okay, there's a bunch of examples there that are all about multiplication and division and dealing with the positive and negative exponents there. Got a couple more on the next page that are more about power to a power. So for power to power, again, when in doubt, write it out. This means y cubed times itself, because that two means two groups of the thing inside being multiplied, which is then y times y times y times y times y times y, just count them, there's six of them. So the shortcut for power to a power, how does three and two make six? Well, that's multiplication. So the shortcut is power to a power, you keep the base, multiply the exponents. Again, I'll show both ways to see which way works better for you. So for nine squared to the fourth, that would be nine squared four times. I want you to think about this as how many nines do we have? I'll write them all out so you can just count them. Hopefully you got them by now. There are actually eight nines. How do we get that eight? Shortcut, two times four is eight. Keep the base the same and multiply the exponents when it's power to a power. Okay, for this one, we can again write the whole thing out. This would be x squared y to the fourth times x squared y to the fourth times x squared y to the fourth, since there are three of them. So three of everything on the inside. And then again, we can rearrange the pieces, put all the x squareds together and all the y to the fourths together. If you wanna go and write them all out from here, you definitely can. There'd be two x's, two x's, two x's, which would be six x's, and then four y's, four y's, four y's, would be 12 y's. So what's happening here, same idea, it's just you're multiplying everything. So four times three made the 12, and then two times three made the six. So it's x to the six, y to the 12. For the next one, I'm gonna do that little shortcut here. 
So that would be 2 squared to the fourth times x cubed to the fourth. Power to power means you multiply the exponents, keep the base. So it would be 2 to the eighth and x to the not seventh, twelfth. A lot of people try and add those because you're thinking of the multiplying rule. Power to a power, we've got to multiply the exponents. For the next one, very similar. This would be y to the fifth to the negative fourth times x to the negative one to the negative fourth. Power to a power, we multiply them. This is y to the negative 20 times x to the positive four. We don't want to have a negative exponent in our answer, so we're going to keep the x to the fourth up top because it already had a positive. And the y to the negative 20 goes to the bottom and it becomes a positive 20. Okay, over here, everything gets that squared. So 10 gets squared, x squared gets squared, y cubed gets squared. So this is 10 squared or 100, doesn't really matter. This would be x to the fourth, y to the sixth, not fifth, be careful. So we can call that 100 if you want, 100 x to the fourth, y to the sixth. Okay, we've got a few more here that get a little more complicated. Let's see how these go. So for the next part here, what we're going to do is we're going to do the most complicated part first. So this power to a power seems the most complicated. So let's do that part first. So that would be 2x squared times 2x squared all over 2x. Well, 2x squared times 2x squared, if we rearrange, 2 times 2, x squared times x squared all over 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth all over 2x. And I've got just a more basic division problem. 4 divided by 2 is 2 x to the fourth divided by x to the first, and put the one on there, that would be x to the third. So 2x cubed would be our very simplified answer of what we have there. For the next one, it looks a lot crazier, but we can do this. So again, we're going to do the power to a power first. So we're going to keep the 12xy there. We're going to write the 3x twice, though, since it's being squared, all over 3x squared. Okay, a little bit tricky here. So I'm going to rewrite the 12 and the 3 and the 3, and then the x and the x and the x, and then the y. So let's take a second and make sure you know where those came from. 12, 3, 3, x, 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 and the y. The last part there. Okay, and then all over 3x squared. So 12 times 3 times 3. So that would be... So that's 36, 12 times 3 is 36, and then times another 3. I always go off to the side here, 36 times another 3 would be 18, carry the 1, 3 times 3, that's 108. So 108x to the third y over 3x squared. There's no y's in the bottom, and that's okay. And we're going to do our numbers together, so 108 divided by 3. Well, we just figured out whether it was um, something times 3 is 108, so there we go, it's got to be 36 x to the first y, because there's no y's in the bottom to be divided by, so we really just keep the y there, which you can call this just 36xy. Okay, a couple other crazy examples that we're going to try and fly through here to finish up this video. So we've got 2 out front, which does not have the cubed on it. Notice why it doesn't, it doesn't get cubed. It's not inside the parentheses. Only the things inside get that cubed. So 2 times x cubed times y squared cubed over x squared y. This is going to be a couple steps here. So 2x cubed, y squared cubed becomes y to the 6, power to a power, over x squared y. I'm going to try and line things up a little bit to make it easier. So the 2 has nothing to go with it, so it's just 2. x cubed over x squared is just x, or x to the first. And then y to the 6 over y to the first is y to the fifth. So 2x, y to the fifth. Okay, one last problem here. Let's look at this one. So we got a little bit of craziness here with power to a power. We're going to keep the 25x squared first. Then it's 3 cubed, x squared cubed, over 15x to the fourth. Wow, this is going to be a couple steps. Okay, so 25x squared, 3 cubed. Well, let's see, 3 cubed would be 3 times 3 times 3. That would be 9 times 3 is 27, okay? So times 27 times x squared cubed would be x to the 6. Again, power to a power, we got to multiply. Divided by 15x to the 4th. This is going to take a little bit extra work here. Put the numbers together. It's 25 times 27. 
and then x squared times x to the sixth, all over 15 x to the fourth. Okay, we're getting there. So 25 times 27, let's multiply those first. Seven times five is 35. Seven times two is 14, plus three is 17. And then put your zero, two times five is 10, two times two is four, plus one is five. So this is six, six, 75. Okay, so we've got 675 x squared times x to the sixth would be x to the eighth, because we're multiplying with the same base, all over 15 x to the fourth. Okay, now I've got to just simplify a little bit. Let's do 675 divided by 15. So, oops, not 16, 15. 15 going into 675. Well, 15 going into 67 would be four times, because that would be 60. And we subtract, and we get 75. 15 going into 75 would be 5 times. So that would be 45. It's 5 times, yep, okay. So that would be 45x to the 4th. Because the x to the 4th there comes from subtracting your exponents. So that was a ton of practice, but hopefully it helps you out um, with just different, different rules and when to use them and how to kind of go in order here to do a bunch of different practice problems using laws of exponents.